you, Alicia. February is Black History Month, and this month, a new documentary project called Living in My Skin was released. It included interviews by 33 black men from all across San Antonio. Brandon Logan is not only featured in this documentary, but he is one of the doc's co-executive directors and joins us live for the leading essay this morning. Good morning, Brandon. Thank you so much for coming on with us this morning. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you were part of the Living in My Skin documentary. Can you give us a brief explanation of the doc, its message, and why it was so important to you? Yeah, thank you for the question. I think um, considering the aftermath of the tragic loss of George Floyd, uh, the executive producer, uh, Seymour Battle, myself, along with uh, national uh, artist Lionel Sosa, had a conversation about what to do. I know on my end, I was receiving numerous calls from uh, white male, white female colleagues that serve in the C-suite, trying to understand the landscape of what as a next step to do. And one of the things that I realized is that I could not make a contribution in isolated spaces every single day. That became very exhausting uh, when you consider the, uh, the effects that the George Floyd uh, killing had on me. But I realized that I had a role to play in creating a directional path for uh, my friends that were non-Black and figuring out how they can contribute. So what we realized is that the greatest form of learning in this instance was gonna be through storytelling. And we wanted to identify a diverse set of young men and uh, males that could uh, tell their truth to create a space where they could authentically uh, share their story of what it's like growing up in San Antonio, living in America as a black man. And Brandon, February is Black History Month. Have you felt a change this year? And what do you want the people of San Antonio to really recognize? Well, personally, I always get excited about Black History Month. Uh, I love to consume stories, and I think that we are on the precipice of making real change. Considering uh, the documentary, uh, the level of engagement, and the responses that were received, I think we're starting to live up to the original belief system that Carter G. Woodson operated when he established Negro History Week, which was the precursor for Black History Month. So you consider 1926 when Negro History Month was established, uh, Dr. Woodson realized that the stories of African-Americans were, were told at a much slower rate than other races in this country. And what he wanted to do in an effort to reduce racism was to enlighten individuals from an educational aspect. So when you think about the story of Madam C.J. Walker, the first black millionaire, or Frederick Douglass Patterson, the first African-American automaker, or A.G. Gatson, you know, the first black millionaire. And lastly, rounding out Reginald Lewis. You know, he was the first uh, business operator for a billion dollar company. These stories, unless you research them, are not commonly told. And Black History Month serves as that vehicle when there's a level of willingness to engage uh, in these uh, amazing contributor stories to realize that this is American history, not just black history. And so I think uh, we are on the edge of delivering this new wave of information. Uh, when we see legislation passed with uh, the admittance of African-American studies in schools, that is our best bet is to really diversify uh, student learning so individuals can recognize and identify if you are non-white about the history that is being told uh, in our classrooms. Now, Brandon, you're a leader at uh, Urban Capital Partners. It's a nonprofit that helps education efforts in San Antonio's inner city. So why are you so passionate about this initiative and what do you want people watching to know about it? That's a great question, Max. You know, growing up in San Antonio, uh, two parent family household, uh, lower middle class. Uh, one of the things that was very difficult for me to connect with was to see myself in leadership outside of uh, the realm of sports. And sports was the guiding uh, light for me to and through college. Uh, but I knew that there was much more uh, that was within me that I needed to contribute to uh, the larger form of society. And when I realized that I needed to be the person that I needed when I was younger, uh, I started to, to map out a plan of how I can fill that, that void. And with Urban Capital Partners, we are really focused on uplifting the standard of learning and living in inner city communities. 
I wanted to be able to go into communities that physically I could identify with to help lift uh, those individuals up, not only from a people standpoint, but also from a place initiative, because we have to consider you know, neighborhoods. And if you look at just the basic definition of community, it, it essentially is people in place. And this organization is a social enterprise that's trying to cover that landscape. And if we can have, you know, this system that is focused on uh, education, parent, uh, and health, we'll have the ability to have these interconnecting locks that can help to lift these individuals up and out uh, through a social vehicle that will help uh, affect the future generations. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for, for your time this morning. Of course, those of you watching at home, you can find this full interview later on this morning on KSAT.com and all that information about the Living in My Skin documentary also on KSAT.com. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Take care.